Update 102 has two main topics. Maps. One was fixed and one was brought back. And Soviet tanks. Two new Tier 10 vehicles were introduced, while the Object 268 version 4 and the Object 430 version 2 were rebalanced. Previously, the Soviet tech tree saw a serious reshuffle. As a result, two branches were left without top vehicles. But within six months, the Object 277 and K91 arrived. The Object 277, a new Soviet Tier 10 heavy tank. It follows the T-10 and inherits all its features, all its strengths and weaknesses. The hull of the Object 277 features the same light armor, for its type and tier, of course. The turret, however, boasts good armor, so you can use it to your advantage. Unfortunately, you can't use any hills. The Object 277 has typical depression angles for a Soviet vehicle. On the other hand, the other gun characteristics are excellent. Armor penetration with standard shells, damage per shot, aiming, accuracy, and damage per minute. Apart from that, this tank inherited good speed and maneuverability from the T-10. It looks like this vehicle turned out well. Another newcomer in the Soviet tech tree is the K-91. It crowns the branch of Soviet tanks with a rear-mounted turret. In terms of characteristics, it's a successor of the Object 416. It has thin hull armor. The front is 140 mm thick, sides 60 mm, rear 40 mm. We don't need to say anything more, the numbers speak for themselves. The turret is thicker, but it still has the thinnest armor of all the Soviet Tier 10 medium tanks. It can't rotate 360 degrees, only 220. This vehicle's mobility is good. The maximum speed is 55 kph forward and 20 kph in reverse. It accelerates easily. This tank's specific power isn't record-breaking, but quite good. The K91's gun is good. No catches, no quirks. Damage per shot is 320. It's not much for Tier 10, but it's easily compensated for by other characteristics of the gun. Accuracy, aiming speed, rate of fire, and excellent damage per minute. All these parameters are among the best among the Soviet Tier 10 medium tanks. The weakness of vehicles with a layout like this is the depression angles. Surprisingly, the K91 specifications read minus 9 degrees depression angle, but it's true for sides. Aiming front, it's only 5. No miracles here. It's a usual value for Soviet Tier 10 medium tanks, and if you compare it to the previous vehicles in the branch, the K91 is easier to find a good position for. The characteristics make it obvious that the K91's role in battle is to provide support. It should play from the second or even the third line of attack. The vehicle has all the necessary to do so. The gun that's excellent at sniping targets, viewing range, and last but not least, good concealment. After the introduction of the K91, the Object 430 version 2 fell off the branch development logic. Therefore, it was rebalanced as a continuation of the Object 416 to fit better. The tank's hull became thinner, so did the top turret. Instead, it got a new gun, which can boast better armor penetration, accuracy, aiming time, and damage per minute. In addition, it became less detectable after a shot. That's it for the medium tanks. Let's talk some serious vehicles. The Object 268 version 4. It sustained several stages of adjustment during the tests. It's time to reveal its final form. The first incarnation of the Object 268 version 4 was too powerful. Its results were noticeably higher than those of vehicles playing the similar role. It was obvious that its specifications needed to be adjusted. At the same time, we wanted to preserve the main features of this vehicle. Mobility, strong armor, and high speed in reverse. A gun that provides convenient gameplay at close and medium range. The object's place in battle is at a close or medium distance to the enemy. However, its gun sported characteristics which often allowed it to play from far behind its allies. That's why we increased its aiming time and increased the dispersion caused by movement and turret rotation. The vehicle's protection was weakened, the durability was reduced, the armor became thinner in the vulnerable spots of the front projection. Now they can be penetrated more often by Tier 8 and 9 vehicles. 
From the moment it was introduced up to now, the object could keep up with medium tanks and compete with them for good positions from the start of a battle. With update 1.0.2, its engine will lose a portion of its power. Its forward and reverse speeds will decrease, same for the hull turning speed. Now, the object will not compete with MTs. It's still mobile enough to quickly move across the map and engage enemies in places where it's needed most. The test showed that these fixes were successful. The vehicle's efficiency reached the planned level. At the same time, it kept its character and is enjoyable to play. Having discussed vehicle news, it's time to move on to lofty matters – customization. Players complained that it was sometimes difficult to understand how a vehicle will look in the game when you paint it. We fixed this problem. Now, when you click Exterior, the vehicle enters a special garage. The lighting in it is set up to display the colors more precisely. Apart from this, you can apply different styles to a larger number of vehicles now. Not just Tier 10 vehicles are available for customization, but all Tier 6 and 8 ones as well. Now let's talk maps. Four maps were improved in Update 1.0.2. The imbalance of spawn points was fixed. These changes were added on the basis of statistics and player feedback. On Malinovka, they're aimed at strengthening the team playing from the northern base. Previously, it took time for their vehicles to get to the key areas. Now, they'll spawn closer to the windmill. The bushes on the balcony now grow in a different way, and the terrain was changed slightly. Now, it's more convenient to spot enemies from here. The church by the hill was rotated, and a lowland was added there. It turned out to be a good defensive position against attacks coming from the hill. A shoot-through of the ascent from the swamp appeared. There's a small slope on the hill now. It can cover the vehicle playing at this position. Similar changes were made to fjords to make battles for players at the northern base more successful. Houses were put here to cover the road from enemy fire from the lower base. Now it's more convenient to play the turret at the edge of the ravine. The indestructible house is a gift to anyone who likes this position. An alternative route to the base appeared on the hill descent. Erlenberg received its share of changes as well. They were aimed at adding options for the attacking team and at restoring balance in general. The biggest changes were made to the castle area. It was turned around. Defending it is now more difficult. There are now many trees and buildings on the east to provide cover for vehicles against scouts and artillery strikes. Two relatively symmetrical groups of houses were added. They'll come in handy during the offensive. And a rock was put on the left flank to provide cover during an attack. Mountain Pass a number of convenient positions were added for the upper base team. They provide a much more convenient way to control the northern and central parts of the map. Positions used by the lower base team remained intact. The Klondike map returns to the game for grand battles. The map was improved and received a new HD look. But the gameplay on this map remains the same. The same vast spaces. Many drive-throughs that you can't block no matter how hard you try three major combat zones – left flank, center, right flank. And all this in the uneasy cold of the Canadian North. Perfect for hot weather like this. That's all for now. Good luck in battles!